Hello, my friends. Welcome uh, to the AI Show Live. My name is Seth Juarez, and in this magical 90-minute journey, we're going to be doing a couple of things. I'm pretty excited that all of you are here. Uh, I am on Learn TV and also on YouTube. Make sure to check it out. Now, the most important thing about a live show, and I was taught this by the greatest producer on earth, is live is for interaction. And so if you have anything you want to say, I have some screens right here and I have some screens over here that tell me everything that you're saying because it's going to be a little bit of a different show. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what it's going to be like and I'm going to come on every other week-ish uh, to talk about some of the cool stuff that's happening at Microsoft in AI as well as building something real with AI and it's more of a long form kind of thing. So we're just going to, we're going to hang out a little bit, you know, I'll put on some, some cool music and we'll just hang out. So let's do this. I want to make sure I explain to you exactly what it is that we're going to be doing. So I am going to share my screen here um, so that we can take a look at this new expanded uh, AI show format. And I have here a handy dandy whiteboard where I'm literally going to draw it out. And again, I, I'm, I'm watching all the chats uh, to make sure that I get any of your comments. Uh, someone from South Africa is watching. Hello, South Africa is a beautiful place. In fact, if I, if I can reminisce, I was there literally a year ago, plus or minus a week or two. All right, let's talk about the AI show here. So um, usually when we look at the AI show, we're used to something like um, like this. So let me go uh, to channel nine, uh, channel nine here, .msdn.com. And, and you'll see at the bottom there is, and this is also on YouTube, by the way, uh, but you can see there is the AI show. Now these shows we do, a lot of them, but usually we record them and then we edit them. And so what we're going to do now in the AI show live is we're, we're going to still edit them, but we're actually going to record them live. So here's the outline of our show. And again, apologies for my horrible writing. Number one, for about the first 30 minutes or so, we're going to actually do an AI show as if you're not there, right? I'm gonna record it and we're gonna do mess ups and you get to be part of the studio audience, number one, which is really cool. So for example, if there's a new responsible AI thing that comes out and Manoush comes on, who's an awesome PM, we'll do the AI show as if we're recording it, but you get to sit there and watch as I mess up. Because believe it or not, mostly you probably don't believe this at all. I know you don't, but I mess up all the time and we have some fantastic editors that fix stuff for us, which is very nice. So you'll get to see that. You'll get to see the mess ups. Caitlin's really cool. Who's one of our editors. She will sometimes put the mess ups in because it's just hilarious. Uh, but now you get to see all of it. And the benefit, obviously you can watch the edited piece whenever you like, because we're going to put that out as an AI show. But the benefit of coming on Friday is you actually get to ask them questions. I'll say, hey, thanks so much for watching. And we'll see you next time. Like I do on the AI show. And then I'll freeze and then we'll cut right and then and then i'll be like okay th that was an awesome show uh do we have any questions from the studio audience um and so yeah make sure make sure you come for those that's going to be the first 30 minutes now the second 30 minutes or the second 60 minutes ish is we're going to make something but not but not like uh not like a make something you know how we make stuff on like shows and it's like pre-canned and we're like, and now all you have to do is type these 6,000 lines of code and I made a snippet. You've seen it. I've done it. I'm, I'm guilty of this. And I made a snippet and then you put it in and it's like, wow, Seth writes code so fast. Uh, it's not like that. I have stuff that I've made, but I want to make something bigger. Uh, so that's the 60 minutes-ish. Now, I'm going to add some stars here with uh, some red. Now, let me open my teams because maybe they're telling me that my audio is bad. No, oh, everything's looking good. Everything's looking good. Uh, nobody's complained to me that they can't hear. 
or that something's wrong. If there is, just let me know, okay? I want to make sure we fix that. Okay, so during the second six, uh, during these 60, 60 minutes ish, I'm going to add some cool segments. We don't have any today, but I'm going to add some cool segments. So make sure that you tweet at me or chat at me or whatever you want to do and tell me if you have any ideas for these cool segments. I'm thinking of two. Maybe we'll do some more. Like, you know how sometimes you're coding and you need like a mental break during the 60 minute sprints that we're going to do? This is what we're going to do for the mental breaks. The first one that we're going to do is uh, I built a thing. And hopefully it's an AI thing. I built a thing. Man, I, my writing's terrible. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to erase this. I feel like you, dear viewer, deserves more than crappy writing. I built a thing in AI. Now, this segment is awesome. Because I want you to tell me about the cool AI things you've built. And we'll we'll feature them. Uh, I'll be like, oh, man, I, I can't figure this out. Um, it's time for a I built a thing in AI. And we'll take a little, a little tiny break. And we'll show that, number one. Number two, the number two thing that I want us to look at during our mini breaks during the coding is... Here's a cool library to do AI. I'm, I might even have guests because I know people like that work at certain places. Like, for example, let's just say you think PyTorch is awesome, which I do. I know people at PyTorch. I'm like, hey, can you come on for a couple minutes and tell us about your cool lib? Or, or if you built a cool AI thing, a cool AI lib or something that you want to share that everyone can use, that's awesome, right? And maybe that'll be more the I built the thing. So just be aware, I am super excited for the back and forth. Uh, that's the part that I think I'm most excited about. And so if you have any comments or thoughts or whatever, uh, just let me know. So let me go and bring my bring my chat up here. Uh, hello, world. Uh, the male mandrill says, you still write better than me. Greetings from Italy. Thank you. Thank you. So nice that he's saying I write I write better than him. I have I look, I'm gonna be honest with you. So, like most of you, I've been at home this whole time and I've been like making some expenditures that I don't think are rational. Like, for example, I bought this Wacom tablet. And so now because I'm using it on the show, I can convince my significant other that it was indeed worth it. It was worth it. Okay, so uh, for this one, um, for this, oh, by the way, here's some more questions. Uh, do you know when Ignite registration will open? I, I don't know. Usually I show up when people tell me to show up and do things, to be honest. Uh, another, uh, hello world, thank you, Hash Star uh, uh, Plays Canada. Uh, we have from Germany, hello, Alex. Uh, Rand, Alexa, read my chalkboard back to me. <laughs> AI. You know what's funny is I have I have an Apple Watch, and um, sometimes I might be talking and it will go rogue on me. And my my Siri is like a British guy. He's more like my butler, my my digital butler. Uh, so every once in a while, um, it might mess up. Okay. So for today, I will tell you that we do not have this part, which is okay. Sometimes we will. Sometimes we won't. I think we do next week or the next time we we, we uh, hang out together. The January 22nd show, What's New with Translator? Document Translation with Krishna Das. So make sure you come with your questions next week. And I'll make sure to remind you there at the end of the, of the show. But this is what we're going to be doing. And there will be a lot of dad jokes on, look, at on build. I slipped. At build and at ignite when I do shows like that, I have to be pretty buttoned up because because i could get in trouble here i could get in trouble but less at least that's what i'm telling people uh if you're on learn tv uh the chat is also live and i'm monitoring it down here just like down here so you can you can see it uh so i'm excited to do that 
Okay, now again, uh, here's an important detail about this particular show. So let me let me do something here. Uh, one important thing about this show that I want you to understand is, just put it right here. Um, this is this is this is uh, idea number three, if I may put it put it so. Number three. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. And I think that's the greatest thing to ever say to anybody. And, and I'll, I'll tell you a story and then we'll get into what we're building. Um, a long time ago, a long time ago, in the 1900s, as my kids would say, hey, dad, were you alive during the 1900s? Yes, son, I was. During the 1900s, right around the turn of the century, I worked at a consulting firm as a consultant. I was I was still in college. And I remember going into this place, um, and I remember they were billing for me like $130 an hour, which is the most ridiculous thing. Because I was, look, I was still in college. I didn't know anything. I still don't know anything. But I know a little bit more about what I don't know. So it's okay. And I remember going in there and being nervous. And I'd be like, boss, his name was Bill. Bill DeBevick. Look him up. My very first tech boss. Super cool guy. And I go, Bill. Oh, let me turn so that like I'm looking at the Bill. Is it okay that they bill $130 an hour for me? That was an unintentional double bill, by the way. And he said, Seth. And I said, yes, sir. He said, and this is the greatest advice I've ever gotten. So this is this is like this is the value of the show. For the rest of the time, just put me on in the background if you want. But he said to me, Seth, they pay you that much, not because you know what how to do things or what you're doing, but because you will figure it out infinitely faster than any of them ever will. Greatest advice ever. So with that in mind, let me tell you what we are building. And I might have put it up accidentally already. So there is this game called Rochambeau. Uh, maybe, maybe you've heard of it. Uh, uh, and this game is basically rock, paper, rock, rock, uh, paper, uh, paper, scissors, right? Rochambeau. That's the, that's the game. And what I want to do is I want to build a, a Rochambeau game that uses AI, that like it will see you do the thing and play against you intelligently. But I want to build it all together. Like I have pieces of the things. And today, for today's show, I'm going to show you the pieces that I have, and then we'll start to build the actual one. This is why I don't eat breakfast before shows. And I'm just like, okay. So let's talk about the show. Uh, let's talk about the game that we're going to build. This is number three. Uh, Rochambeau. I recently learned that this is the name of it. Rochambeau. And the goal is I want to build an interactive. Interactive. Man, get a little lag here. Let me turn some stuff off. Got too many things going. Let me turn this off. I have a I have a confidence monitor. I'm gonna turn it off because it's it's doing too much stuff. And and by the way, I I debated whether or not I should go like full Twitch streamer and have like the mic like right by my mouth like this. Hello, everybody. I'm not gonna do that. I feel like that's just too weird. I don't want to be that guy. Okay. Uh, so let me let me delete this here and let me let me make it so that we can see it better. So we're gonna do an interactive interactive version of it where it can see you and see you like do the symbols number one so understand so understand the symbols uh understand the symbols number one and then number two beat you uh i have some ideas on how to do the second um I don't know if it's traditional AI, but that's okay. Um, 
but I have some ideas here. If you all have some ideas about that as well, but I wanted to make it so that everyone can go and actually, actually play it. Um, so that's what we're going to do. All right. So, um, uh, I'm just going through my notes to make sure I've said everything. Yeah, I've said everything. So uh, let's do it. Let me let me zoom out here and make sure that we've we've gone over all the notes. By the way, I'm going to save these and put them up somewhere. Wow, this is bad. I should I should move this stuff over. Make it look like I know what I'm doing. You know that here's a little here's a little a life tip. We should have life tip moments. You know. I'm, I'm going to move this over so it looks like I did all this on purpose. Uh, nobody knows what they're doing. People are just really good at faking it. Uh, so, yeah. By the way, uh, incidentally, I am serious about the the uh, the inter, inter, like, break things up. Uh, if you built a cool thing with AI and you might like to share it, let me know. Uh, we'll show it. We'll, we'll take a look at it together. Uh, or if you're if you found a cool library uh, for AI that that you want everyone to know about, let me know that as well. Okay, uh, so I think we're done with the all the the pre stuff. Uh, if you have any questions, again, uh, go to the chat. I'm happy to uh, answer them. So let's start with uh, what I've already built. I don't think I'm going to need this anymore, so I'll put this over here. Uh, totally worth it telling everybody best money I ever spent um, my computer is this way and so if I'm looking that way and it looks like I'm looking at the wrong thing sorry as they would say in Canada so the first thing I want to show you is there's actually there's actually uh, two things we're gonna do today um, I'm gonna show you um, something I already built uh, that uses cognitive services and something I already built that uses PyTorch. And what I want to do is I want to kind of merge them. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put up a site where this is supposed to live. Okay. So that's what we're doing in the next, uh, well, we got 70 minutes. We can get that done today. Talk about what I've already built on the cognitive services and the other thing I built using PyTorch and then put up a website. Can we do that? Do you think we can do that? It's a little ambitious, but we're going to try it out. Okay, uh, so let's start with the thing I built first. Um, let's open. Uh, let's open this up. Uh, and here we have. Let's just file open folder. I put everything in a projects folder because I do. So we'll go to Vision, where I have some stuff in there. Oh, you can see it's, it's already open. Very nice. And let me show you what this does um, uh, so you can get a sense for what we're doing. Um, but we're going to build our own custom one. Not that this custom Vision isn't great. It's awesome. Uh, but I want to do like a full end-to-end -end AI thing because I think there's a lot. There's too much mystery around this stuff. I, I, don't, I don't like it. There's so much mystery that people say stuff about what it is and what it isn't. And I have strong opinions about it. All right. So uh, let's run it. Uh, let's run it first so you can get a sense for what it is. And then we'll uh, go ahead and uh, go through it, see what it does, see how it does it. Uh, so, again, we'll go to Vision. You're probably wondering, why aren't you just doing it in the thing here? It's because I like this. It's so nice. It tells me what Conda environment I'm in. Conda activate torch. torch. Uh, and let me, let me, oops, not LSD. Embarrassing. Let me go to the API. Uh, and uh, let's uh, package.json. Let's see how to start this thing, because I, I don't remember, if I'm being honest. Again, remember the dog picture. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, looks like npm start. So we'll do that because there's a back end uh, with Azure Functions, npm start. And then there's a front end uh, written in view, I think. Let me make sure this starts right. Yes. Okay. Things are happening. It's good. This is great. Okay. Good. It works. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. 
Cool, 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 cool. So CD vision again, and this time we're going to do the client. Um, I think this uses something else. Start. Uh, serve. And it uh, looks like it uses yarn. So we'll do yarn, yarn, serve. Now there's a lot of stuff happening here. I could spend hours talking about how this was built. I'm happy to. Um, but I think I won't all the way if that's okay. Uh, unless you tell me to. Unless there's overwhelming like, hey, you need to tell us how this happened. By the way, I'm going back to I'm going back to learn TV chat to make sure everybody's I'm getting what you're saying. Okay, so let's go to this thing right here. Um, here it is. I'm gonna put this up right here, and you're wondering what Seth. You're already using your camera. I have more than one. It's like it's like two sets. This is a horror show. This is probably the worst thing you've ever seen in your life. I gotta, I gotta get myself to fight with myself. Does this, does this look like I'm punching myself? Sometimes I do emotionally. That was deep. That was deep. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, Naruto. Hello, look, there's a lot of people here. Uh, just tell me stuff. If one of my dad jokes is no bueno. Don't tell me. I will cry. What my my kid the other day was like, Dad, you're not funny. So I said, Well, I made you, didn't I? I didn't say that. I said it in my head. I don't want my kids to be damaged too much. But anyways, notice that I'm here uh, on my rock paper scissors thing, and if I put paper, it kind of gets it. Oh, bummer. But here's the thing about machine learning. If you if you if if you want like a one sentence sentence thing on machine learning, machine learning. Oh, look, my my butler woke up. One sentence on machine learning. Machine learning is a lazy way of writing functions with data. That's it. So if you're watching this and you're like, well, it thinks none is scissors sometimes. Or if you put your hand up, it thinks it's scissors. Where? Let's there. Oh, uh, there. It thinks it's scissors, but that's not scissors. That's paper. So we'll just give it some more papers, so it knows that those are papers. And then we say here. Now you know that that's not scissors, right? And so machine learning is this iterative process of building these things we call models that are basically functions built with data. That's it. Beep. So um, that's it. And so now you're like, well, it should recognize it. No, because I basically gave it more pictures and now we need to retrain it. Um, but in order to shortcut all of this stuff, I used custom vision. Because at Microsoft here, by the way, let me go back here. Uh, boop. Because these images, remember the ones I just, those, one, those are literally the ones I just did. I did some more this morning because it was ridiculously bad. Because apparently I hadn't worn this shirt before. Maybe the computer was telling me I should never wear this shirt, which is hurtful. It's hurtful. I'm just kidding. This shirt, my wife bought it. It's like my Friday shirt where we're all just hanging out, you know. Uh, but anyways, you have to give them these images, and then you have to train it. And you click train, and then stuff happens, right? And this is awesome for a number of reasons, because it, it's a ready-made solution. You can do a ton of cool stuff with it. Um, and um, it's already done. I, and, and to make these things, you literally just add images. I made, I just made, I just made um, a client here that, you know, I coded up because there's an API for this stuff too. And I, I coded it up so that I could submit stuff on my site and send it over and pull stuff back. And so I could make the whole Rochambeau thing with just custom vision. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to go a step further and build our own custom artisanal model. Uh, believe it or not, we are so close to Portland that I want cage-free AI. Uh, I want it to be artisanal. I want it to have been able to roam on its own. Uh, and at Microsoft, we have something called Azure Machine Learning which helps you with that. And so we're going to be, 
we're going to be doing that. So some questions coming in. Hot dog, not hot dog. Yes, Wes, except this time. Uh, it's like having a hot dog and then a Chicago dog, which is basically a sandwich, and one more, right? In this case, we have four labels. Great question. Uh, Grass-fed AI is the best. Indeed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, horm no, no hormones in any of this AI, I promise you. None. And you're going to see us. We're going to lovingly nurture it from its roots. It's going to be it's going to be like a child. Uh, question, um, uh, is, is it supervised or unsupervised? Great question uh, from Naruto talking about supervised machine learning versus unsupervised machine learning. So the way I like to think about it is supervised machine learning is when you give it the thing and the right answer and then it figures out how to get right answers. Unsupervised learning is where you give it things and say, good luck. Uh, unsupervised learning are things like grouping algorithms, like k-means, uh, or clustering is another way of calling it. There's k-means, hierarchical clustering. Uh, you can also do something like PCA, principal component analysis, uh, in order to, um, you know, find out about the structure of the space. Uh, Non-GMO AI, absolutely. No, we're not modifying any of these things. It's all artisanal. But anyways, uh, when we train these things, then this uh, this thing happens. I trained it like an hour ago because I, I didn't want to look a complete idiot. And you're like, well, Seth, you failed. I wish this was like Cops, right? Like that show Cops was awesome. You ever watch it? That's how I got my start actually on TV. Uh, but I was in the back of a car and my face was blurred. Let's not talk about it. So notice the thing about, about Azure when it comes to uh, custom vision is that as far as I know, our models, like when it comes to this particular um, uh, image, custom vision thing, you can actually export your models. Boom. And you can use it in your own application because this thing is happening. You, you're noticing that this is happening sub-second, sub-second. Right, and as you know, uh, I, I download. Let me download the Onyx one so I can show you what's inside of it, uh, and then I'll tell you a little bit about uh, what I actually exported it to use it on the other thing. So we'll, let's open this file. I'm opening. I'm opening the AI model. Everyone, hold on to your chairs. We don't know what's in here. We're not sure. We're, we're not sure what's going on in here. So um, we're breaking news. I want to show you what's inside of this AI model. Okay. It turns out that if I were to open this, uh, there's a cool program called Netron that lets you look inside. And uh, believe it or not, it's not anything magical. There's like no, like you thought like like butterflies were going to fly out at me and hit me in the face. I just hit my eye. Ouch. Oh, my gosh. I hit my eye a little bit. It's okay, though. By the way, if anyone's watching uh, that has my phone number, I can actually, I, here's another, uh, this is a moment again of, I have to confess to everyone. One of my pandemic buys was a soundboard. And I told, I told my significant other, this is important for my job. And so it turns out that I can actually, through my soundboard, take phone calls. If you have, I'm not handing out my phone number, though. Are you crazy? I'll, I'll get a call in the middle of the night saying, hey, Seth, I have a really good idea. I'll be like, what? It's like 2 in the morning. Picture this. Machine learning for predicting stock prices. Right. So if you have that idea already, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's already been done. But anyways, this is inside the AI model. Notice that if you think of a picture, um, by the way, a picture, 
Uh, a picture is literally just like a square with numbers in it. Think about it, right? Uh, except for like in each pixel, there's like three numbers. So in reality, it's more like three squares at the same time if you're doing RGB. And if you have an alpha channel, then it's four squares. Okay, that's literally a picture. It's like a bunch of numbers. This, like if you were to look inside the matrix of pictures, you would literally just see three numbers in each pixel. Um, so um, the reality is once this picture comes in, notice that when it comes in, it comes in at three by two, 224 by 224. Three is the channels, RGB. 224, 224 is height, height and width. I'm going to get my, my Friday beverage here. There's no alcohol. I don't drink alcohol. Could you imagine me being drunk? It would be terrible. Goodness. But anyways, the picture comes in and then math happens. I'll give you an example. Batch norm basically um, makes the, makes an average out of everything. I can get into this a little bit later. This one, this one I'm not as sure about the, what the math does. I know that what it does, it makes it so that the numbers are uniform. Uh, according to a specific distribution, um, the one in here. This one I do understand. Basically, once it does that, it multiplies every pixel by what's in this matrix and then adds these numbers. And I'm telling you, they're literally, they're just numbers. Look, like I'm showing you inside AI and everyone's like, oh, this is, this is not as cool as I thought. It's cool though, because we're here together. All right, and then math happens some more, and math happens over here, and they're like, why Why is there this thing? Well, it turns out that this is a nice way of, when you're doing what's called gradient descent, some of the gradients go to zero, which causes issues. Math doesn't like zeros, especially when you're multiplying things. It hasn't, it's like, it's like you're at a party, and then like you're, 45 year old uncle shows up to the teenage party and he's like, how do you fellow kids? And it kind of ruins everything. That's what zeros does to neural networks. It's like your uncle showing up, you, dude, this is not the right place for you. Uh, Naruto says, uh, we can build and train a model uh, which can predict the price of an of a old car. We absolutely can. Uh oh, okay, there we go. I think I crashed my, um, one of the things about using the, the, the camera a lot and, and AI in the browser that I haven't figured out and we'll have to figure out together is that it literally will crash that tab because I'm using too much memory. Um, so here you go, it's, that's literally what it is. And what happens is what we've done is we've told, uh, we've told custom vision to build it for us and to make it actually work in the client. Oh, it's still there, it didn't crash everything, something blinked. Maybe it like reset itself. But to make it work in the browser, um, as everybody knows in computer science, the technology that we build isn't real until it's in JavaScript. It's true. It's not real unless it's in JavaScript. Then, then at that point, everyone's like, oh, okay, this is a real thing. That's a real thing. Uh, so it turns out you can download this TensorFlow JS model. And that's what I did. And so in here, I'm using, in the client, you can see I'm using a TensorFlow JS. And what I did is I downloaded the model files. Sneeze, hold on, I'm gonna sneeze. It was a fake sneeze. You ever have a sneeze that was like trying to come out, it just won't? Ugh. Now I'm gonna be weird. It's gonna look like I'm crying the whole time. Let's just pretend I'm really passionate about it. Not that I have to sneeze. Just forget I said the sneeze part. Okay. Uh, so notice that here's the model. In the model, like it tells me what the labels are. It tells me all about the stuff that Custom Vision exported. Uh, it tells me about the manifest, right? Like what, what's where it came from, you know, what the, the SHA-1, you know, all the good stuff. And then here's the model. And you're like, Wow, that looks like a lot. In fact, even, even Visual Studio Code is, is having a little bit of a fit here because it's like, look, Seth, it's a Friday. I don't want to work that hard. Um, okay. But notice that what we have is we have like a graph. 
Does it look familiar? It's literally like the other graph that we looked at in Netron, but just in a different format. Uh, open model here. Let's see. Model.onyx. I don't know if this is the same one, but I pretend. I think it's a different one. Uh, but here's a simpler one. Uh, but notice that it's literally, this is just like a graph of things, but in JSON format. Because obviously, it's not real until either you have it in JSON, and it's extra real if you have it in YAML. Just FYI. So this is what the model looks like. And so what I've done is in the actual, I, I wrote it in Vue because I don't know anything about JavaScript. is like super complicated. And I know people are like, no, it's not. It's just JavaScript. Yes, it is. Okay. The first JavaScript I ever wrote was in 1996. Yes, thank you. In 1996, and it was like an image rollover. It was the most glorious day of my life. That's not true. Up to that point, I was 16. And I had thick glasses, but we're not going to get into that. But notice, here you go. It's basically like here's a view thing. And you can see that here's the um, the script. And when it when it mounts, I get the camera and I load the model. And the model you can see here is right here. And to load the model, it's basically here. Can I, I'll control plus it. Make sure you all can see all this goodness. Um, load model async, which is this model thing that we downloaded. Load the manifest, because when you're looking at the manifest here, you can see, by the way, this, this died. Uh, like it runs out of memory sometimes. I might have to refresh it. But anyways, you can see it, it loads the model and all that, all that good stuff. It loads the labels. And then what it does is it sets the interval at 100 milliseconds. And every 100 milliseconds, it predicts. So it does this 100 every 100 milliseconds. And you can see there's this this dot model execute async. They have made a wonderful library that already does. Uh, you can see right here custom vision tfs. It does all this all this goodness. Uh, and so every hundred uh, every hundred milliseconds, it just repredicts every time and spits it out. And then I capture. Then I did did some more stuff and captured some images. And then I add images. And then when I submit them, I submit them to the API. And you're probably wondering, well, where does it, how does it do that? I'm so glad you asked. By the way, uh, if there is a secret alert, like if there's a secret that I'm showing, just let me know. I, I don't want to show any secrets because if I do, it'd be a problem, right? I'd have to go, I'd have to go full secrets. Like I'd be like, oh no, secret stuff is happening. Okay. So we'll make sure I'm not going to show secrets. And if I do, someone call me out. Any way to reduce the camera frame rate to interval loop? Wes, you might be a better JavaScript programmer than I am. So, yes. I, I got to bring up the picture, the, the important picture to set the framing of everything here. Yes. Yes, indeed. Okay. Uh, so, in this index, right, basically... Uh, when I execute this function, it gets the training key, the API endpoint, and the project key, which we need for the API. I, I create a new trainer. I look at the tags that are available, create them if they're not there. And then what I do is I basically create image images from training files and set them up, and then that's it. And so I send them over. Um, but it'd be cool if we had this entire loop back and forth. Um, and I don't know. I don't know if custom vision is the right place to do it because I want to have multiple models. For example, eventually I want to get, I want to get um, it so that like there's a whole like DevOps pipeline. Uh, number one, number two. I want to make sure that, for example, there's other models that are going to be in there. Example, like hopefully, uh, I'll, I'll talk to people and they'll tell me if we can do this right. Hopefully. Um, Eventually, I'll get it so people can like go and submit their own images, and I don't want people submitting like bad images. This is a family show, okay? A family show. I don't want to show up and label some image and like some dude was like, ha, ha, ha. "Is that a full moon?" <laughs> Although that's kind of funny. Don't do it, but it's kind of funny. Uh, and so I need to make sure. And there's other AI models that we have that can detect whether y'all's is being inappropriate. And we will we'll catch that. Um, all right. 
Uh, so this is how this works, right? Uh, we have a create images from files and then I post them. And then if I want to train it, the only way to do it is, no, no, I'm clicking too many things. Why is so many clicky things? Uh, I basically go over here and I just hit train, right? Because you saw when I, no, I don't want to publish. You saw when I, uh, when I came back, you saw there was like the other images that I added. That's basically all that it was. So that's the first project. Um, so let me go down here and uh, let's go through and... Let me make sure that I'm saying the right things here. So number one, I've already showed you. Come on, come on, wake up. There we go. Okay. So number one, uh, I was going to show you three things, by the way. I know we're going to start to get to work. Number one, I showed you my my site with uh, with the um, with the AI in it, right? And this uses custom vision, which was great. Okay, so check on that. The second thing I was going to show you is a custom model build. Okay. Uh, so let's close all this other goodness down. Not that, because if I shut that down, everybody goes away. And then and then it'd be, I'd be done early and people would be like, no. We wanted you to... Oh, by the way, Learn TV will cut me off at exactly noon. Or no, 1230. It'll cut me off. It is ruthless. It'll just be like, you're talking? I don't care, man. It's 12.30. The other channels won't. They're not as harsh. Maybe they should be. I don't know. Okay. Uh, so uh, let me uh, close this. We're going to close this one too. The next thing I wanted to show you, by the way, let's see if anyone's talking to me on Twitter. Not yet. Come on, people. I'm really accessible. Like... Seriously. All right. Um, so number two, I want to show you like a model that I, I had already built that was similar that I'm going to adapt and build custom myself. And then and then uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about the other things I'm going to show you. So we're going to go to food AI here. Uh, and here is one. Uh, if you see over here, here's my data. And basically, um, basically, I built an AI model to distinguish between tacos and burritos. Um, now, I love Washington State, where I live. But before, I lived in L.A. And the name Juarez is actually, you know, as you know, Norwegian. No, I'm just kidding. I couldn't even pull it off. <laughs> Mexican. And so I love me some tacos. I love me some tacos, but my peoples, I don't know if like the ones that can cook real good made it all the way up to up north here. Cause I'm telling you, man, there's only so many things with ground beef and yellow cheese that you can call tacos and none of them are it. So anyways, I made a, a machine learning model to distinguish between tacos and burritos. Let's go large here so you can see it. Uh, here is an example of a burrito. Uh, no, I need to, I need to like, I wish I had like a, a laugh track or something. That was the wrong one, but I think it worked. <laughs> Here's a burrito. Well, I don't know if this could be called. I went to Bing and I binged images of burritos and downloaded them. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, now a day's programmers are on Talk Talk rather than Twitter. Talk Talk. I'm gonna call it Talk Talk for the rest of my life. That's awesome. Uh, churrito. Yes, churrito. Um, so yeah, I gave it pictures of burritos. Apparently, not good ones. <laughs> this is tragic. I. Oh my goodness. Yellow cheese and ground beef. I, I told you, people. I told you. It's not right. Um. I don't know. This one. This one looks. Let me. This one looks kind of good. 
But anyways, I gave it pictures of burritos and tacos. Oh my gosh, that looks like a that looks like a sope. Doesn't even look like a taco. That that oh that actually looks delicious. Th look at this. See, this is some art here. Okay, all right. There you go. And so basically, what I've done is I've made some code to build the model artisanally, free range. And this this uses Py uses PyTorch. And I'm happy to get into PyTorch. Like, right? if you're like, hey, we want a PyTorch primer. PyTorch is fantastic. Like, I love a lot of the machine learning frameworks, but for deep learning frameworks, PyTorch was built like with programming in mind. The whole, all the way down the stack. And so it's pretty cool. So basically you can see here that I'm loading the folder, training folder into an image folder data set. And that data set will separate the tacos and the burritos for me. And it knows the labels and it knows what the classes are. And then you can see here that when I load them up, I do a little transform. I crop 224 randomly, and then I do a flip because for us, like if you, like, let's just say you have 10 pictures of tacos, but you want like 100, how do you do that? Well, it turns out that us humans can look at a taco upside down and know that it's a taco, except for in the state of Washington, of course, as I've mentioned. Uh, and so you can actually flip things around. I don't have this in here. Uh, you can crop things and still know it's a taco. You can solarize things and still know it's a taco. You can black and white things and know it's a taco. And so that's a way of augmenting your, your data set, which is nice. So here's my training one. This is a validation which says, am I doing any good? So if you ever hear about a machine learning model being like a thousand percent accurate or uh, this, our model is 99.7% accurate. You're like, wow, that's pretty accurate. It means on the data they've held out, not on all of the tacos and burritos in the universe. So just be aware of that. When you're looking at accuracy numbers of models, you gotta be careful like how they're reporting that stuff. Is it on everything it's ever seen in its life or is it on the held out validation set? Now, here you go. This is the actual model. Remember how I showed you, uh, here, let me open it up again. I keep closing it like a fool. Netron. By the way, Netron is a gift to humanity. Thank you, Lutz. Rotor. You wonderful human. So basically, you can see that it's just this long thing, right? But here, what I've done is notice that these two are those like W and B ones that, that we talked about before, all the way down here. Uh, that says gem. Stands for generic matrix multiply. There's the B and the C. So this is this is these are these linear things. The last the last two. Notice it's a thousand by twelve hundred, right? And then the one at the, the one below it should be like by two, right? Because it's only two things we're guessing: taco or burrito. Uh, and so notice what I've done is in in PyTorch you can actually build your own models artisanally by stealing others other models. This is a model. That's really good. Uh, it's been pre-trained. So somebody trained a model to do a thing. And what I'm doing is I'm like, we're like cutting off the top of the, the bottom of their model. And then we're taking their entire model and then we're attaching our own. It's called transfer learning. It's fantastic. Once you have a model, this, uh, the cost function tell us how crappy we are at guessing the right thing. This is called the loss function or cost function. This is cross entropy loss. It's big words. Like, like if you're at cocktail parties, these are the kind of words you use to impress people. What kind of loss are you using? Cross entropy. Oh, I used it too. This is uh, the optimization way. So what, what the optimization does is it looks at the loss and tries to minimize it, push it down. And it does this in a huge loop. Uh, this stands for stochastic gradient descent. Again, at cocktail parties, it makes you sound very smart. Um, and then this is the loop. Where we where we train each epoch, boop, 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 boop. and then I save every model because you got to. And then this learning rate says how big of a step should I take whenever I'm optimizing. I'll give you an example. Let's just say, for example, that you're a golf player. By the way, the only golf I've ever played in my life was Mario Golf, because that stuff costs a lot of money. Uh, so Mario Golf. Imagine at Mario Golf. You're only allowed to hit the ball a certain distance to get to the hole, but you don't know where the hole is. What fixed distance do you pick? 
So let's just say you don't know this, but the hole is like a hundred yards away. If you and let's just say you aim perfectly. So if you pick a hundred yards, you get a hole in one, but you don't know it's a hundred yards away. So if it's 50 yards away and you pick a hundred, you're just gonna never get to it, right? If you pick 50, maybe that's too big, right? Because maybe it's only 40. You see what I'm saying? And so there's this notion of when you're optimizing these things, we don't know where the best optimum is. And so we have to pick what's called the shot size or the learning rate appropriately. Here, my learning rate, I think I picked it to uh, 0.01 or something, 0.001. And notice that, that I'm cheating because as I'm playing golf, I'm doing this thing called a back off which means that I'm making the learning rate smaller as it goes, as it trains. Okay. So we can, we can be done with this. Uh, yes. We're done. Exit. Fantastic. Control C. Yes. Exit. Oh man, I did too many exits. Uh, yeah. Zeno's paradox. Wes, man. Yes. I feel you, man. It is Zeno's paradox, but basically in optimization, it's basically kind of what it is. So we're gonna we're gonna activate the torch environment. Conda activate torch. By the way, if there's stuff that I'm doing that you're like, what the heck are you doing, or why does it look like that? Feel free to ask some questions. I'll help us out. Uh, and let's go to source ls uh, and let's train. Let's just train it. Python Python dot xe and train dot py. And now we're going to go golfing for the best numbers inside of the model to make the tacos and burrito things happen appropriately. Now, this is going to take like a couple minutes, so I think we should just stare at each other with the music. It's like weird music to be staring at each other. Right? I feel like... I'm not going to run it all, all this because it's, like, it's really boring. going golfing yeah there's 569 batches inside of each batch there is how many pictures that we put in each batch oh it's up here so there's four pictures in each batch we're doing it 25 times with uh i think i don't know it was like 300 images and so basically it'll just it'll just do this 25 times that's what the epoch is so basically an epoch is it goes through all the images right, which is nice We'll just let it do its thing. I mean, does the music scare me a little bit? I'm not gonna lie. I, I don't know if I'm cool enough for this music. It doesn't feel like I'm wearing the right shirt for this music. Like I feel like I, I need to be wearing like leather or something. But it's hot in this room, and if I wore leather, I'd be like a sweaty mess, and then it would be a real dumpster fire show. Not like half dumpster fire, but full. Bowl dumpster fire. Okay, so I'll let this run. And you can see that on the outputs, it's basically outputting model. You're like, wow, there's a lot of models in there. Yeah, because I don't delete them. Right? And the way I save models is like, hey, this one got 50% accuracy on the training set, 43 on the validation set. And we want the numbers to be high. Or maybe this is the epoch. I don't even remember how I saved, did this. How are we saving these, Seth? Okay, tell us. Go to definition. Uh, onyx file. Path onyx name. See, I put the name in there. Here it is. The validation and the valid validation accuracy and the validation loss is what I put in the actual file. So you can see that validation accuracy is 80% accurate, 30.034 on the loss, right? And the loss is we want it to be zero. So the sucky function says how bad you are at something, which is our cross entropy loss. Right. In this case, if the loss is great, that means you really stink. If the loss is zero, it means that it could find no fault with you. So that's what that's all about. Okay. So it'll just keep doing this for 25. Notice we're already getting into some really good validation accuracy, which is not necessarily good because notice that the training accuracy and the validation accuracy are very different. And anytime that happens, there, there might be there might be some weirdness happening. Usually it's the reverse. Like for example, let's just say you do really good on the training, but you stink at the validation. That means you've done something called overfit, which means that you've basically memorized your training set and it doesn't generalize well to your validation set. It's no bueno. 
Uh, so we don't want that. Okay. Uh, so as this keeps going, it's going to keep building models. We can actually open these models all in um, because it's an Onyx uh, Onyx uh, file. Onyx are, Onyx files are the best. It's like a PDF for uh, neural networks. Actually, not just for neural networks anymore. I spoke to Andreas Mueller, who um, who works on um, Scikit-Learn, and apparently you can put Scikit-Learn models into Onyx now too. So. It's cool. It's like a PDF. Uh, PTH is the standard um, pa uh, file extension for PyTorch models. Um, but uh, if I let me go to reveal and explore, revealed. Uh, I can open these up, and you'll you'll start to see like in Netron. Uh, it's basically the same models I showed you before, but the numbers are different, right? <clears throat> now, for those of you that are watching and are like. This feels kind of hand wavy. It is. That's why. I wish I. Hold on. I. It, it is kind of hand wavy. So. News alert. These are hand wavy. Sources have told us that most AI models are hand wavy, and number two, nobody knows what they're actually doing. That's a problem. I feel like we should, another news a break. Most people that talk about ethics in AI usually talk about the model not being ethical. The reality is sometimes the data isn't. Like if I only put Washington state tacos in here, it would learn that tacos are Washington state tacos, which is unethical. And to be completely serious, on a serious note, sometimes, when the data that you have that's training your models disadvantages a particular group of people, your model is also going to disadvantage them. Serious talk. So we got to be careful, right? All right. So it's on Epoch 9. Um, there you go. Now, the cool thing about this um, is that it's taking forever, and we don't like that. Uh, so in Azure... Uh, and most clouds, I, I don't. I haven't looked at some of the other ones, but you can actually run these in the cloud a lot faster. Food AI experiment. I've done this already. Here's run thirty nine. I ran it on Gandalf because he's a wizard. Did I not do that soon enough? I feel like I clicked too many things. Look, I got a I got a subscription to this like sound effects thing because I you know you can't play sounds unless you like are licensed to do it. So I, they have so many sound effects. Um, I almost feel bad for everyone because I'm gonna use all of them. Like I feel bad for you all. Um, yeah, it's okay. Pry it up. I'm gonna use all of them. All of them, as much as I can, because we are licensed to do so. And that was sad. Ooh, baby crying, it's the worst, right? It's the worst, it's the worst. Okay, anyways, I ran this thing inside of um, Azure. Because basically, like, I'm going to boil it down. Don't tell my boss. Azure machine learning is a way of running things on a lot of machines in a way that you can verify results. That's it. It's cool. Well, I don't know what changes I made. So we'll go to this experiment. I ran this one in November of 2020. We were so young back then. How times have changed. Here's the metrics. Oh, by the way, you can probably hear my, like it's telling me I have to go do something. Here's the accuracy of this model. You can see that it's getting better, but spiky. You can see the, uh, this is because I'm, that's because I'm measuring it like across every single thing. So it's spiky. But if you measure it across epoch, notice that it gets smarter accuracy. And the loss, oh, I, the loss should go down. 
You're probably looking at this spikiness. I'm probably measuring like the end of an epoch wrong. Um, so we, we could fix that. You can see the epoch loss. It's going down. And then the validation accuracy. And then the loss. Oh, we had a little bit of a bump there. Snowboy, no, we want this to go down. And the longer you run these things, the, the more the numbers, because the numbers are just, they just want to please the data. That's all they want to do. Basically, it uses calculus to please the data to map to whatever model. That's all it wanted to do. It, it, it doesn't care about anything. Like if, if I were to put tacos and burritos in there and I were to give it a pizza, it'd be like, mm, I think that's a taco. And then I were if I were to give it like, like an ice cream sundae, it'd be like, that feels like a burrito because it doesn't know anything. It just wanted to please. It doesn't. I was at it. Look, I was real talk, real talk. Hold on. Hold on. I got to get this real talk time. Sources tell us uh, that most people, when they look at things that seem human, imbue them with human attributes inappropriately. Example. If I were to pick up a rock and draw a smiley face on it, immediately your brain would be like, oh, he's happy. It's not. It's a rock. Same thing with AI. If you give it a picture and it's like, that's a burrito. It's like, wow, I wonder how it thought about that. It didn't. It multiplied pixels by numbers. I know. Not exciting. It multiplied pixels. It's a rock. It's literally a rock. Someone got mad at me on Twitter when I said that. Imagine someone getting mad at you on Twitter. Wow. Usually it only happens on Facebook. You. Usually it only happens on, on Facebook. Uh. Because I was like, well, AI isn't a rock. It's a sophisticated mathematical model. <laughs> yes, it is. You're right. It is a, is a sophisticated mathematical model. But it has zero feelings, no emotions, and it has no ethics. It only has the model function and the loss function that you gave it so it could please the data. That's it. Um, Max is telling me I'm really aggressive towards rocks. It's true. I had a rock thrown at me once. It was a weird. Um, wheat tortilla with sliced turkey from Wes Ray. Ah, oh, that sounds healthy. It might be close to lunchtime, people. So if y'all are going to say any food things, just be careful. Uh, okay. Uh, cool, 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 cool. All right. So what we want to do then, uh, Let's. Uh, so I did the number two thing here. You know, I'm trying really hard not to be 12 years old. I just said I did the number two thing. Let's just let it go. We're just going to let it go. Let it go. Uh, uh, showed a custom food. Let it go. Okay. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it. It's Friday. We can't let it go. I just said I'm going to, I did the number two thing. We're going to move on. Okay, so the idea is then, what if I suck all these pictures out, use this to make our row chambeau thing? So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we have about 25 minutes to put up a site. Uh, let's see if we can do it. Um, now... Again, we're not going to be done. This is going to take like, like a couple of months because I like I'm literally spending an hour every two weeks on this. I might I might spend some more time, you know, just because I. And then the other thing is I might run into an issue. Like I don't know how to do a thing. Like I'm terrible at React because I want to do this in React. If that's okay, React is just like such a funny name for a for a framework. React. I did. I don't understand it. That's my. By the way, I know the DevRel people at React. Maybe I, I'll call them one day and be like, hey, can you? I don't know what I'm doing. Can you help me out? So the first thing we got to do here is um, we got to buy a domain name. 
Uh, so, uh, let's see here. Rochambo. Rochambo. Side hustle sale. Let's do it. Rochambeau.ai is that's happening. Let's go to my cart. View cart. Like now the secret the secret stuff is happening. Hold on, let me let me go to um let me go to my stream yard here. Oh, very good. And let's go to the secret stuff. Secret stuff happening. I'm buying a domain name, everybody. Confirm your order. Yes. Pay now. Expires in 2022. We are committed. 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 Rochambeau.ai is processing. The next thing we got to do is we got to... We got to start making our uh, project. Obviously, OBS, we got to put it on the GitHub so everyone can look at it. Uh, so let's go to github.com. Uh, not that one. Uh, we have AI advocates. Uh, we have some stuff. This is the lovely team I get to work with every day, they're fantastic. Uh, by the way, am I showing my screen? Yeah, good. You can see it. Cool, 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 cool. So we're going to make a new one, and we're going to call it Rochambeau. Rochambeau. OBS public. And then we'll choose a license. What should we do? Obviously, y'all got to pay me, like, for only 99 cents a day, you too can sponsor a Seth Juarez. MIT, of course. Kapoom! Oh, it finished. Oh, look! It looks. It it got it got dumber after Epoch fifteen. Look at this. So it looks like this is the one we want to keep. Um. Yeah. There you go. Uh. CD dot dot. CD dot dot. LS. Coo 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 coo. We did it. So let's get the code. Kapow. Get cloned. Some of you are like, but that, but Seth, there is a GitHub Windows thing. I don't know how to use it. I'm old. Um, there you go. Code dot. Uh, okay, the locally. Now here's the thing. I don't know how to do mono repos, and so I'm gonna try to do a. I'm gonna try to do a mono repo because notice that this is gonna have code for like front end, an API, it's gonna have code for training a model, it's gonna have code for doing GitHub Actions to integrate everything together. And um, so yeah, I'm gonna learn how to do a mono repo correctly. So if any of y'all have some tips, like if you're like, no, Seth, don't do it, just let me know. Just let me know. All right. Rochambo. So what I'm going to do is I am going to mkdir uh, client. We'll call it client. And we want to build a website super de duper de quick. So how do we do that? I've been looking up some stuff. Uh, let me go to the chat here, comments, because I want to make sure I'm catching everybody. Mm -hmm. If we sponsor you, what will you buy with the money? Probably useless AI, uh, AV gear, if I'm going to be honest that we're later gonna somehow incorporate into the show to make relevant? Great question. Um, here is a CLI, it creates React components too. Oh, let's take a look at it, nx.dev. Uh, here's a CLI, let's let's take a look here. nx.dev. Oh. Like, I feel like I'd have to read this for a while. I don't even know what. How can Narwhal help you? No, I don't, I don't want to email them. 
getting started. Oh, wow, that's cool. Look at that. It's like swish. NX is a suite of powerful, extensible dev tools to help you architect, test, and build at any scale. Integrate seamlessly with modern technologies and libraries while providing a robust CLI, caching dependency management, and more. It has first-class support for many front-end and back-end technologies, so its documentation comes in multiple flavors. Select the one you want to know more about today. I know. Uh, yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to have to look that up. I was thinking this, uh, DocuSaurus. Saurus. DocuSaurus. I know it's for open source documentation. Oh, this is for DocuSaurus 1. We recommend number 2. Dang it, I did the number 2 thing again. Um, I know, right? Wes is like, spin the wheel on the JavaScript framework. Um, I did some view stuff. I want to learn React because I heard it's cool. Or maybe everyone else is like using React and I want to know why it's so cool. I want to be cool too, okay? I want to be cool. Um, breaking. Um, Seth Juarez wants to be cool as well. So indeed, he will learn to use React. I think I need to find some more stingers. I've, I've already reused that one a lot. Uh, Angular is more my flavor. Like, I like, like, I, I looked at Angular and I looked at Vue and the thing on Angular is it's like Angular is like like you you it's like you're building a new house and then your mother-in-law shows up or your father-in-law who's super opinionated about where things go and they're like are you sure you want to put your controller there? I think it goes here. Uh Luis uh Quintanilla is like uh Svelte is the hot thing now apparently. So it's hot yoga, but I'm not going. I, is everyone picturing me doing hot yoga? Don't. Like, you will not be able to eat lunch. Uh, boilerplate uh, container. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. No, seriously. Uh, Angular is, like, very opinionated about where things go. Um. Uh, I worked with a bunch of Ruby devs at the last... I remember Ruby... I went to, like, my first... When was I in college? In the early thousands. In the early aughts. Uh, I remember going to my software practice class in college because I, I went to school for computer science. And the professor could not stop gushing about Ruby. He just loved the fact that it had multiple inheritance. Loved it. And I was like... If only he could see us now. JavaScript, the language where you could pull the tires off the car, put them on the roof, and the car somehow still goes. I love JavaScript, though. It's fantastic. You can do some crazy stuff uh, with it. All right, let's see. Let's get started. Let's do it. Uh, installation. Uh, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, MPX. Is it going to make like a folder for me? Okay, let's do this. Let's just let's just follow the instructions. What, what can go wrong? Uh, and then we'll we'll see if we can deploy it so pe people can look at it. And then we'll map my my brand new domain name, which I just purchased. Thank you for your purchase, Rochambeau.ai. By the way, we're committed for two years, ladies and gents. Okay, uh, MPX DocuSaurus init my website classic. Let's do this. I bet I know what's going to happen. So we're going to cd dot dot rm rm dir client here. Uh, let's call it. Let's call it client. It's happening. It's happening. Our multi-million dollar idea of getting people to be social online by playing rock paper. Like this is. I think this is what humanity has been missing during the pandemic is the ability to play rock, paper, scissors with each other. 
if you think I'm crying, I'm not. I still have to sneeze a little bit. I can't get it out. I don't know what to do. Wow, there's, there's a lot of stuff happening. Did, we, did I make a mistake? Um, he's choosing DocuSaurus. Because I also want to document like what we've done every day. That way people like when, when people start showing up, you know, like because they, they've heard that sometimes Wes shows up and everybody knows like Wes is cool. You know what I'm saying? And if Wes is there, then I need to go or, you know, if I should go, you know, my amazing colleague is like, she's there, man. Like, I want to be where the cool kids are. All right, let's see what happened. I was right. CD client. By the way, um, if you're at work and you're like, there should be like a boss alert. Maybe that's part of part of like the API. That way it can alert me and you can just like push a button and be like, boss alert. And then I could like go to like a PowerPoint presentation that has like a slide that says maximizing productivity in the workplace during the pandemic. And you'd be like, look, I'm just, I'm watching this thing. That's what I'm really watching, sir, ma'am. Um, I can do that. Then that way you're like, but I'm getting training from Microsoft, sir. Okay, free training. All right. Well, how do how do I start this thing? Yarn start. Yarn start. Docusaurus start. Beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, 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 boop. Here we go. We have officially made a website. Beautiful. Oh, hey now. Look at that. Look at that. So we have a site. Um, let's close this one because we're not doing that anymore. We have the client here. Kapawi. Maybe let's see. Uh, let's go into the config babble. No, that's not it. Package.json. Oh, look at all this goodness. Read me. Hey, yo. Uh, this command generates a build. There's some static and things, staticky things in here. Source, this, there's the pages. There's the CSS. Let's take a look at the index here. Oh, I see. Uh, this is weird. I've never seen this before. Is this because it has to force, uh, is this like React style stuff that forces things to, uh, forces things to be in tags? That's funny. That's awesome. Uh, and now let's go to, how do we config this? Oh, docusaurus.config. I knew there had to be something like this. Rochambeau.ai. Uh, Rochambeau.ai. Uh, and then obviously the tagline of our site is bringing humanity back with the world's most beloved game. Now with AI. Like if I put this, if I just say AI, like we're going to get some serious VC funding. If, if, if we put blockchain in it, we're going to be millionaires. Like with blockchain. Obviously, obvi, obvies, it needs to be Rochambeau.ai. Rochambeau.ai. Uh, GitHub, usually your GitHub org or username. Org username. Oh, so this would be AI advo. I only have 10 minutes and it's going to cut, cut me off. And we got to hurry up. And then uh, and then project name is Rochambeau. Okay. So let's see what we got here. Uh, I think, uh, where is it? Where, where are you at? Oh, it still says my site, but Rochambeau.ai. Uh, the nav bar title, uh, Rochambeau. Uh, my site logo. We'll we'll leave this for now. And what we'll do is we'll try to get it up in the next nine minutes. 
nueve minutos. And then we'll go and we'll edit some of this stuff. I might edit it on the off time too. So what we're going to do here, uh, if that's okay, is I'm going to go to portal that azure.com. So I make sure I don't have any like secrets here. Before I do the thing, Oh, say neural network and I'll get series A with seed. Yeah, I know. Let's go to my subscription. Uh, I better not, y'all. See how much I spend. Ugh. Resource group. We're going to make a new one. Boop, boop. We're making one called Bro Chambo. We'll go West US 2 here. West US 2. West US 2. Is there no West US 2? Let's see. West. Oh, there you go. West US 2. Recommended. We're going to call it Rochambeau. Bo. So now the reason why in Azure you create resource groups is it's a way of grouping things together. And I want all of my Rochambeau stuff available available uh, in one place. Okay, create. I always forget that. Last little button. Go to resource group. What I'm going to do is this. Let's try something. Uh, CD Rochambeau. L ls uh, git status git add dot git commit minus m initial uh, rochambeau.ai site rochambeau and you're probably wondering why does it take so long to commit a lot of people waiting to get married are thinking that same thing lot of people thinking to get married or thinking that same thing. I gotta hurry up. ABC123, obviously. Obvi. Git, uh, git push. Origin main. <laughs> Lovely. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a uh, static web app. Create. Let's do it. Let's call it Rochambeau. Rochambeau. Beep. West US 2, so that we're in the same place. Uh, signing into GitHub is not supported on MS Hub. Click here to react to uh, production. Okay, leave. Oh, I was using the secret. I was using the secret Azure portal. <gasps> Okay, the resource group is going to be Rochambeau. Rochambeau. And then we'll say Rochambeau. Boop. And the region totes West US 2. Sign in with Lake GitHub. Okay. So the organization is going to be, it's got, where's AI advocates? AI, oh no, oh no, that's stinky. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to put it in my own, um, my own place. Cause I mean, I got five minutes, I don't know how to fix this. Well, I knew I'd run into an issue right here. Why won't it let me do it? Let's see here. Uh, github.com github.com uh, AI advocates over your turn figured it out how do I make it so that uh, oh so let's go to settings no not project settings third party access remove restrictions Oh, shoot. Only approved applications can access data in this organization. I'm going to say yes, remove restrictions. Uh, set up access restrictions. Okay. So maybe now um, if I go, let me let me cancel out of this. No. Rah, rah. Uh, let's go to create a resource. And we'll say static. 
static web app create uh, Drochambo. Drochambo. Nice. Drochambo. Uh, region West US 2. Sign in with GitHub. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, to access data within this uh, authorized. No, I don't want. Okay, hold on. Do, 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 do. Put it over here. Beep, 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 Signing in. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now it's happening. Uh, AI advocates here. Yes. Rochambeau. The branch is going to be named. Uh, going to be this. Build presets. I don't know. Tags here. Um, people are telling me stuff. What are they telling me? Oh, they're telling me I have to say goodbye soon. Oh, oh. Well, I'll get this set up and I'll show everybody. I'll send a link out to everybody. But I want to say, if I can, thank you so much for coming to our... Oh, was my microphone in the way the whole time? I was like a Twitch streamer. How embarrassing. Thank you so much for coming to this first episode of the AI Show Live. Hopefully you had a little fun. Hopefully you had a sense for what this is going to be like. In the next episode, we are going to be on January 22nd, which I think is a week from now. A week from, yeah, a week from now. Uh, we're going to have the first 30 minutes, the official AI show uh, topic is going to be what's new with translator document translation. We are introducing a new feature to our translator cognitive services that will delight and excite developers. Uh, Krishna Das is going to be with us. Uh, so make sure you tune in for that. It's been quite a pleasure. Um, do I have links or anything for the schedule? Yeah, I'll put something out soon. I probably should have done that. But it's it's Friday, right? And I'm wearing like a, it's like a, you know, like a vacation shirt up in her, right? Uh, uh, I was a developer for 30 years, Jerry Walsh. That's awesome. Uh, someone saying Azure is crap. Innovation, consulting, and solutions. Interesting. I'd love to know why. Then we can fix it. I love fixing things. Um, I put the F in fun. Indeed. Well, my friends, thank you so very much for coming. Hopefully we've had a good time, and hopefully we'll see you next week. This has been an episode of the AI Show. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully... We will see you next time. Thanks again.